as a guitarist, like, as you're starting to do the funk guitar thing, you got your right hand going, you got your, like, F9 voicing, and you're sliding into it and all that. And then that's where a lot of guitars might stay. They don't know necessarily, like, how do I even get out of this? How do I practice beyond this, right? Maybe I grab another, I grab the 13th, and I'm, I'm jamming on that. How would you approach maybe teaching someone that progression? They, they've gotten to that level, but how do they get to your level? <laughs> maybe not quite there. Well, how, how do they yeah, start? Yeah, what's, the, what's the path? Yeah, 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 I mean, there's no way to answer the end of that without sounding condescending. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but I can only tell you my own approach, whether yeah. my approach is the best or not. I guess people would ask me only because they're wondering my take on mm -hmm. it, not because... I mean, if somebody thinks that I'm in the, the best at that, so be it, whatever. I don't think that I'm the greatest in the world at it, but I have my own way of doing it, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's, you know, obviously a very important thing for any artist. Some of the technical nuts and bolts side of that, I think beyond just the classic practice with a metronome, be able to feel time on the beat, ahead of the beat, behind the beat, and and treat those each of those things as a bullseye that you're going for. Like for me, when I think about like, like what you're saying with an F nine chord, there's so many, there's so many variables to that. There's first the rhythm side of it. Second, the voicing side of it. And probably even more importantly, how it functions within what you're playing, mm -hmm. how it functions within the whole. So I'll address those three in uh, the quickest way that I can. The rhythmic side of it, practicing with a metronome, just getting your accurate like there's one thing it's it's one thing to be able to to play fast or to be able to play something really flashy but your actual technical facility you might have a lot of technical facility but not as much mental awareness of time so it to practice mental or to practice the technical facility you go through the exercises. It's more time on the instrument. But to really get the most efficient and best use out of that, it's also honing in your mental awareness of the time and your mental awareness of how you're sitting in within the time. On And the grid, if you're recording along in Pro mm -hmm. Tools or Logic or Ableton, whatever you use, is, is not going to lie. It's going to tell you exactly whether you're right on the beat, a little bit ahead, or a little bit behind. And... For me, when I'm practicing that sort of thing, I try to practice something where I'm going exactly on the grid, exactly right on the grid. So when I when I look back in Pro Tools, I can see the transients lining mm -hmm. exactly in line. And then I'll try to practice where I'm playing just a little bit behind it. So I see the line on the grid, and then I see the transient of my attack just a little bit behind it. And then I try to do the same thing for being ahead of the beat. And what that does is it, it basically allows me to to know whether I'm going for a triple 20 on the dartboard, a triple 17, whether I'm going for a bullseye, you know, it, it's not always aiming for the bullseye. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's aiming, all right, we need to close out the 16s. You know, if you're playing cricket, is that what that game is called? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, not cricket as in like the, I know what yeah, yeah. cricket, I'm, yeah, yeah. I think there's a darts game. I don't know okay. what that darts game is called, whatever. You know, where you're going for certain things, you got to yeah. close out certain numbers and blah, 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 whatever. But, you know, if, if you can think about different things that you're aiming for and hit those targets, then it really helps your your technical facility and it helps you to be able to get the rhythm thing together. But then the next step of mental awareness is giving yourself less accountability on the metronome. So instead of listening to pop, 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 I'm just listening to pop, 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 pop. And then putting it down to have that pop, pop, pop. And then putting that on different beats. So sometimes this is one, three, one, three. But most music that we're playing, in most Western music is not felt on one and three. It's felt on two and four. So if you go mm -hmm. one, two, four, if that's your metronome, and then you just go two, three, four, four. If you give yourself one beat of accountability, it forces your mental awareness to really, really focus in a lot more. So the less accountability you give yourself in the metronome side of things, the more accountability you're going to give your, the more responsibility you're going to give your brain to have to be really focused on that time. And, you know, it, it's like throwing darts at the board from 
80 feet away instead of 10 feet away. You know, it's going to be really hard at first, but then eventually you'll do it. Like, okay, speaking of rabbit holes, side mm -hmm. note, I saw this video of this guy like throwing a basketball off of a canyon, <laughs> like making a basket. He was like, <laughs> I don't know how it's like, you know, it starts, he's throwing a basketball off a house and making the best. It's like, oh my gosh, that's sick. And he's like, check it out. We went to this the parking ramp and, you know, on this closed off street and then he throws it off a parking ramp. Then it's like a skyscraper. They're like, yeah, we took a trip to some other country to find the biggest canyon we could. You know, he's like, <laughs> you know, uh, he's got the radio thing down. Yeah. Chuck the basketball. It's like, takes three minutes for the thing to get all the way down. But anyways, so it's that sort of thing with the metronome. You give yourself a, a harder and harder target to hit. You're going to have to be more aware of the nuances of how you're attacking everything. So that's the rhythmic side. The voicing side for me is, yeah, I might know that full F9 chord that's like this. Yeah. You know, but also maybe I just break it down to or or there's so many voicings within, within. that one voice. So for me, when I think about voicings, yeah, I, you know, you have for guitar players, you have your six string rooted bar chord shapes, fifth string rooted bar chord shapes, and then you can build everything up there. You have your drop twos, mm -hmm. drop threes, drop two and fours, drop four, you know, whatever. There's so many different voicings that you can choose from if you study them. But does this, is there, you know, is your brother playing keyboard on the song and is he playing a thick voicing? If he's playing a super thick voicing, you know, kind of an octave below middle C, why are you playing a thick voicing in the same range? Well, he's a Would piano player, so, so he's always, there's never room for me anyways, but. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So if, you need to get up. If your brother is more stubborn than you, yeah. then you have to be the one to adjust. Like, all right, if you're not going to move from that part of the keyboard, I'm going to play my guitar voicings up here. And sometimes... You know, for me, a lot of my role is much more rhythmic. Mm -hmm. In Wolfpack, I am not a lead instrument. I am sometimes I'm musical percussion. You mm -hmm. know, I'm 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 playing a percussive role. I'm like musical bongos. I'm pitched bongos or pitched tambourine. And a lot of the way that I play that in in that band and with my own music is that sort of thing. So with that, I need to be aware of that job is less effective the thicker my voicing gets. So a lot of times. I'm thinking of just two notes. You know, if mm -hmm. it's an F7 chord, sometimes I'll just play an F and an E flat. You know, I'll just play this mm -hmm. this major second interval that functions kind of weird on mm -hmm. its own, but in the context of a bass player hitting a low F and a keyboard player playing some stuff around it, I don't need to be the one to bring all the color tones. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. w if I want to add something that's going to be a little more that's going to add a little more color or going to have more of like maybe I'm, maybe the part that I'm covering is rhythmic and at the end of it I'm playing things that feel like horn parts I might do the uh, little Freddie Freeloader like mm -hmm. Freddie Freeloader 13th voicing sort of yeah. thing on the dominant chord and and slide that up and down a couple frets to, to give it a, a bluesy thing or mm -hmm. whatever you know and if I'm trying to go for, um, I don't know. I mean, with with any of those things, the voicing thing, once you get all the voicings, it's understanding not necessarily, like, sure, does it, does it need to have a thicker, juicier voicing from me? Does the keyboard player already have enough of that information happening? Or in the case of Wolfpack, usually two keyboard players. Mm -hmm. I don't always have to be playing the really fun voicings. What I'm playing is more of the fun rhythmic stuff. And sure, sometimes I play really interesting, cool voicings because of the way that they fit within something. But a lot of times those voicings are way less thick than what most people's instincts would be. And what my instincts mm -hmm. were for years that I had to you know, kind of unlearn. And then the, the third part of this whole thing is how does it fit within the context of the song? And again, just like I was talking about in the voicings thing, is is Kevin filling up the whole thing because he's, you know, playing all mm -hmm. the uh, sorry my voicings. yeah 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 because you got ten fingers sorry I had a Skype no, was giving me a, an alert so I had to stop I didn't know if you were still on okay if if 
if all of a sudden you're playing all these huge voicings, Chase like, I got no room. All right, what's appropriate is for me to play two notes or sometimes one note, mm-hmm. rather than a full chord of that. You know, and it's like, ah, the keyboards are actually going bring, 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 bring up high. Maybe I need to go. You know, so understanding role within what else is happening. And then as far as the timing side of things, is the rest of the band feeling the time right down the center? Is the rest of the band feeling a little behind or ahead? And once I recognize that, do I feel like I should sit behind, ahead, or right on? Because if everybody's pulling way behind, it's like, oh, this is cool. We're laying it back. It's like, well, no, now everybody's just dragging. You know, <laughs> so somebody has to kind of keep the momentum of it. And there's plenty of times. Every, every one of us, you know, has seen at this point bands that are like trying to lay it back and then it just drags. Yeah. You know, so there's a fine line with that as well. So, you know, analyzing, okay, hi hat is right on the beat. Snare is a little bit behind. Do I want to hit the back beat on the snare behind or do I want to do a rhythmic thing that's more in line with the hi hat that's playing more in time? Your awareness of that subdivision will help you and you're because you've done You've practiced shooting basketballs off of canyons. Now you understand how you're going to want to fit within that. And, and your, your awareness of how hard to throw the, the ball off of a skyscraper versus a half-court shot is going to inform you on, on how to place something in a certain place. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a, a bunch up there I wanted to highlight just that I picked up on that might have been different from how I approach it. Um, so talking about you know playing to a metronome, right? Um, I really like how you were talking about in doing it like with, you know, the grid in like, say a logic pro or like uh, pro tools or whatever, because it really brings an element to it that you don't get. If you're just say playing to a metronome, like an actual metronome or an online metronome, which is you don't have that feedback you can refer to after you're done doing like what you're practicing, right? So if you're practicing those chords and you're like, yeah, I think I was in, I think I was in time, unless you have it recorded. I mean, there's gonna be, you're going to find that, oh, man, that spot I was ahead or that spot I was behind. But by doing it in a Logic Pro or, or one of these DAWs, you can literally see those transients and really yeah. see. So I think that's a really important aspect. Like, you're not going to make that Canyon basketball shot if you never know whether you actually got it in. You'll be there forever. So Exactly. Accountability. I mean, accountability is so huge. I remember in college thinking, bro, that gig was great. We were killing it. My friend's like, yeah, dude, I recorded it on my, I, he had, this is, you know, he had an iPod with uh, like a attachment microphone. Yeah. He's like, oh, let's listen back in the car on the way back. So we're listening to it. I thought I was crushing it because that lick I practiced for eight hours. I did it three or four times. And I, <laughs> I got through the lick that I was working on. And then I listened back. It's like, yeah, I mean, I got the lick. But I was really, really pushing to get it out. And first off, it was not appropriate to play the lick as many times as I did because it just sounds like I'm playing some regurgitated thing that I had worked on a bunch of times. It wasn't necessarily the right thing to play. Mm -hmm. Second off, I was rushing the whole time. I was so excited to get this lick. It's like, okay, cool. But the rest of the band is back here, and you are Uh up here. So, yes. Recording yourself, having the accountability is really going to help you stay honest on whether you actually are crushing it or not. Because oftentimes I think that I'm crushing it. I go back and look. It's like, ah, guess I wasn't so tight after all. And sometimes the opposite is true. It's like, man, that wasn't that great of a gig. And maybe it's just because the audience energy was, it wasn't, they weren't giving you the same reaction. Like yesterday, everybody was screaming for this song, but today there was just kind of, they were watching and then you go back and listen to the tapes like i don't know man we were we were killing mm-hmm. we were crushing that's as good as we've ever played that i think the audience just had a different reaction so we had a different emotional response in the moment but musically listening back sometimes it's it's going to be different 